How are you? Hello. I'm so, so, so good. How are you? I'm so, so, so good. No, actually, <laughs> I'm, I'm so, so. <laughs> That's all I am. Congratulations. Hey, thank you. Thank you so much. How's it feel? It feels good. It feel it, it it felt scary leading up. Yeah. Um, just because it's my first album, um, but everyone has been very kind and very wonderful, so I feel much better. <laughs> Tell me what was going through you. Like, what were you thinking about as you wrote this album? Well, I I was writing this album predominantly about. Um, love and just being in love and you know of course like with me I'm innately vulnerable and uh, I'm not really scared of my uh, emotions and with that I'm not scared to write about them so I have songs on the album you know like that's the kind of woman um, which is you know it deeply vulnerable and I always get nervous that there'll be a, a wave of um, a wave of people that don't that don't like it. And when people don't like it, they're saying they don't like a part of me, which is always a bit terrifying. Um, but everyone has been so, like I said, so lovely. So now I feel just, you know, like a little bit more at peace. I'm not sure if you'll have an answer for this, but like, where do you think that comes from not minding being vulnerable? You know, I don't know. I've just, I've always been, I've always been, I was always that that kid that would write um, poetry about things that made me sad or um, things that you know just made me feel a certain way. I all my songs um, have just always leaned that way. Um, I think it's just just innate in who I am. You, I'm, a, I'm a deep feeler. But before you were a songwriter, were you that way? Yeah, always, always, always emotional. My mom said that. That when I was a baby, I just, I never stopped crying. I was just always crying. I was like, well, nothing's changed. You figured out how to make money from crying now. This is great. <laughs> I have capitalized <laughs> on my tears. <laughs> I want to play you a song. Take a listen. Close off and exposed. Salty and I'm seared. Naked in my clothes. Yeah. Love is weird. Don't know how. Julia Michaels, my guest on her song, Love is Weird. I mean, love is a lot of different things, but I've rarely heard love be expressed to me as weird. <laughs> Why is love weird? It just is. It's so weird. It's so complex. And I, you know, particularly in this song, uh, I'm talking about how, you know, essentially you can be in love with somebody and then you can, you know, mourn that love and go through heartbreak and be devastated that you lost it. And then, you know, you take a year, you pull yourself back together. You're, you're like part, you're like, you know, 90% whole at this point. And then you're in a park with somebody new and you have all these beautiful butterflies and you're like psychoanalyzing them and making sure that they're nothing like the person you've dated before. And, um, and then all of a sudden you're like deeply in love and you could give two SHITs about the person that you used to um, spend all your time with. How has the way you think about love changed over your life? You know, I, I used to think that love had to be derived from something chaotic. I think growing up, that's how love has always been depicted in movies and TV shows. Uh, you very rarely see uh, functioning love because I think for you know, entertainment industry, it, it, it can be quote unquote boring. Um, so, you know, the, the throwing things at the wall and the passionately making out um, is more fun to, um, you know, everybody than, you know, a, a communicative, beautiful, easy love. And that's what I, I always associated love with. Um, I think it took being in a very, um, a very communicative, um, supportive, respectful kind of love that, that always meets you halfway and waits for you when you're not quite there yourself um, is a really beautiful thing. And I don't think that that kind of love is depicted enough. Um, and that's, yeah, that's, that's really what I based a, a lot of this album about, around. How do you write about 
that love. Because in some ways, by its nature, it's boring. You know what I mean? Like the, 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 beauty, the beauty of it is that it's boring in a lovely way, you know? But I don't think it is boring. I think you can have passion without it being derived from toxicity. Yeah. You know, it, it can be fun and, and easygoing and light, and it can still be, you know, sexy and, uh, you know, fueled with passion uh, without, you know, having to break things and scream at each other to get there. It sounds like it's deeper writing you're doing here than than perhaps in, before. Yeah, I think I think I think 2020 definitely helped me become a little bit more self reflective than I usually am, uh, and and it definitely made me look at my past relationships and you know myself in those past relationships and the people that I was with in those past relationships, and was just like I never ever want that for myself and I never want that for anybody um for anybody else you know and I I was I I very much used to talk about how that was the kind of love that I um sort of enjoyed and now that I know what it's actually supposed to be and what it's supposed to feel like it's like I I hope that I I hope that nobody ever experiences a love um that they that they don't um deserve it's it's uh, alluring in a pop song, the the other kind, you know, the yeah. the the bad kind, we'll say, or the the you know. It, I love that they do deserve. Did I say that right? No, you I'm, said it right. Okay. But like the alluring, like I think for a pop song, uh, a, a scary, toxic love is kind of alluring. It 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 is alluring because, like I said, it's I think that's it's been depicted as alluring for a long time. Yeah. And it, and it seems like oh like. Okay, let me just cause drama just so I can I can have something to write about. It's like, but like, it doesn't always have to be like that. I, I wrote a song on my new album with JP actually called Little Did I Know. JP's your partner, by the way, Canadian songwriter. Yes, yeah. Canadian. I love my Canadians. Mm-hmm. Um, so you guys wrote a song together. Yeah, we wrote a song together called Little Did I Know. And um, it's... It's, it's, it's literally, it was the first song I, I had ever really written with the person that I love talking about, um, you know, how I thought love was Shakespearean, how I thought it, it, it was this tragedy. Um, and now I know differently. Julie, were you always gifted with words? I don't know. I mean, I, I don't, I don't know. You, you're, you would like, you, you have a great way of turning a phrase, you know, I, I can think of all the songs you've written for other people and, and your own songs as well. Was that something you've always, that's always come easy to you? I think, I think I've just always tried to find ways of saying things that don't feel generic. And I, I've done that ever since I started songwriting. You know, like I, even if sometimes my course leans generic or something, I just, I always want to find something that feels outside of the box. You can always, you know, go with the grain, but I prefer to go against it. In terms of going against the grain, it's hard for me to imagine a song that is sort of less generic than this one. Just take a listen to this. I want to live in a world where all your exes are dead. I want to kill all the memories that you save in your head. Be the only goal it's ever been in your bed. I want to live in a world where all your exes are dead. I want to live That is... Uh, my guest, singer and songwriter Julia Michaels with her new album, Not in Chronological Order. That's all night. I want to live in a world where all your exes are dead. <laughs> what is that song about? JP and I actually wrote this one, too. It's funny. You, you're, um, those are the two songs we wrote together, Little Did I Know and All Your Exes on this album. And it's, it's my Canadian was, antenna going off. That's what's going on. <laughs> it must be. <laughs> and um, we, I had had like... I had taken a couple of songs off the album that I just felt like weren't as strong or as me as some of the other songs on the record. And with taking songs off, I was like, well, now I'm really short songs. I need to write another one. Uh, and so I asked JP, because obviously he's one of my favorite songwriters in the world and one of my favorite people. And I was just like, come to the studio with me. Let's write something. And he was like, yeah, no problem. So. We had three days in the studio. 
And first day we didn't do anything. And I don't really remember the conversation that this came from, but we were in the car and we were talking and he goes, um, you know, maybe one day in the future we'll be able to uh, talk about the people from our past that have helped shape our present. And to that, I was like, no, I don't want to know. I don't care. I don't give up. And um, he was like, you can't just live in a world where my exes are dead. And I was like, I sure damn can. And um, I sarcastically sang the first two lines in the car. And then we went to the studio the next day and we wrote it together. Uh, and it's, you know, it's sarcastic and it's satirical and it's, it's aggressive, but it's rooted in the idea of like, you know, the, the thought of you loving somebody as deeply and as intimately as you love me now um, hurts me. And I, I don't want to like, that's something I don't want to even like fathom. It's, it's that one caught me off guard, Julia. <laughs> It's um, it's one of those things that I think a lot of people think, but not a lot of people say out loud. <laughs> so where do you get, where do you get what you need to say that out loud? If you know what I mean, like. I, I mean, I have no problem saying whatever the hell I want. Yeah. I just don't. I think that's the beauty of of artistic expression, right? Is that you can. Okay. So how about this? If the beauty of artistic expression is being able to say whatever you want, whenever you want, how do you write songs with a romantic partner where sometimes it's not easy or even a good idea to say exactly what you want whenever you want? Well, if you really think about it, he wrote it with me. So there's clearly something that he has to say about people in sure. my past. And I don't, I don't, I'm sorry, and I, and I should say, I don't just mean that song. I think that songwriting is such an intimate experience. Oh, absolutely. To share that with somebody else is, um, how, how's that? Honestly, it's great. Um, I, I respect JP and his craft and his talent and, you know, he is the same with me. So there's a lot of um, just mutual, um, yeah, respect for each other. And when we go into the studio, I can be a bit aggressive and I can be a bit um, neurotic and um, uh, intense. And I'm very grateful that he doesn't take that personally because obviously it, it never is. It's just when I'm in the zone, I'm like, and, and he's just like, okay. Yeah. Okay. Let's try it. Let's try it. And then, it, and then he'll let me get my thoughts out. And he's like, all right, but I think we should maybe try this and maybe we could try this. And I'm like, oh yeah, cool, cool. Um, are you able to turn it off? Like, or, or are you just sort of writing songs with one another all the time? Like what you're <laughs> bless you. All right. Thank you. Um, no, we are absolutely able to turn it off. Um, we really only write together when, um, when it's sort of, not scheduled, but if I'm like, Hey, I want to write, or if he's like, Hey, let's, I have this idea. Like, would you want to do it with me or something like that? So you're not shouting down like, you know, what, what rhymes with, you know, door JP. No, okay. No, but that would be funny. Well, you know, maybe I'll make it happen. Uh, how about some more music from your record? And this is a song you, you referenced earlier. Take a listen to this. Childhood picket fence Smells like confidence Raised with a little more common sense Isn't always on defense Sits up straight and knows how to take a compliment Jealous but the right amount Isn't scared of missing out Missing out, scared of missing her, yeah Doesn't buy things to fill voids Doesn't hate the sound of her own voice If the me, I am Walked out That's the kind of woman I'd leave me for. It's Julia Michaels with That's the Kind of Woman, which is the last song on, on the album. And, and from what I understand, it was uh, an emotional experience recording that. I wonder if you could tell me that story and tell me why. Of course. Um, I was writing it with, uh, well, actually, it started in the bathtub, which is where most of my songs start and I think it's just because it's where I get to be alone with my thoughts and I 
who is thinking about essentially if I was a well-adjusted, emotionally stable kind of person, what that would look like, what that would entail, what kind of person I would be. And then I had all these different thoughts and I just thought, well, yeah, that's, that's the kind of person I would, I would leave myself for. That's the kind of woman I would leave myself for. And I brought it to my really good friend, Michael Pollock. And he was like, this is definitely the weirdest way of saying this I've ever heard, but let's try it. And he was like, you know, I don't, I don't want to in, inject too much of myself in this because this really should be your thoughts and, and feelings and insecurities and flaws um, that you wish that you could change. And of course he finessed it and, um, you know, fixed it with me and honed it in. By the end of it, we were both crying and, you know, because even though they were my, my, you know, the, these things that I wish that I could change about myself on a daily basis, these were, there were also things in it that he uh, could see in himself. So we were both, you know, very raw and very emotional and, the vocal is the vocal from that day. And we, we actually even tried to go back in and redo the vocal because there were moments where I was, I was cracking and breaking. And when we did it, it just didn't have the same effect. So we actually left the demo vocal as it was. Very sad. I felt very sad when I heard it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. You know? Yeah. Yeah. I guess I was sorry to hear that you you felt that way about yourself. I mean, I am, I am too, but I'm also I'm also not because it, you know it, it's almost like these are things that I wish that I can change and things that I I know that some of them I can. Yeah, you know, it was it was it was entirely self reflective and. You know, these things that I say about myself aren't completely out of the question. And going back to In terms to what, of self-growth. Yeah. And what we were talking about at the beginning, what true love is, is not yes. throwing something at the wall or what'd you say, making out on a dishwasher. No, it takes work. And it's loving those parts of you that you want to change. Absolutely. You know, a lot of those things... Uh, that I am not has made me who I am and has shaped the way that I write and it has shaped the way that I write so that I have a very unique and wonderful fan base full of like-minded people that also have these insecurities and and these things that they you know don't inherently love about themselves but find that love in themselves later. This reminds me of the last time you were in here and you talked to me a little bit about I guess at the time it was it was time for the big jump that you were Julia Michaels songwriter to the stars and you were going to become Julia Michaels the the musician song, singer herself and you said something like that to me about I feel a bit insecure about it I'm not sure if this is the right move or not not I'm not sure if this is the right move but you were scared it sounds similar how are you doing with that stuff now I mean it took me 4 years to put my first album out <laughs> yeah, yeah, you're right. You're right. <laughs> so, you know, I don't know if that ever really goes away, but um I think it's definitely taken myself time to become comfortable with um being an artist and everything that comes with it. You know, my I just I love music. I love uh I love words. I love the way music makes you feel. I love that I have this creative release. Um and I get to express that creative release every day. Uh, and I'm, I'm grateful that I have, you know, a, a, a beautiful community of, of people that uh, resonate with it. Um, but, you know, of course, there's things that come with it that you're not prepared for, like, you know, bullying on social media and, um, you know, just um, schedules that you're not used to and, you know, you're, you're a bit tired sometimes. And, um, you know, so just, you know, like s some of the negativity that, that you, you don't expect when all you're trying to do is make music, you know, make music that makes you feel something. In, in the world that um, I don't think pop music is appreciated 
until generations afterwards. You know, music that seems like it's just on the radio to some people, you know, decades from now is seen as this great art. But those who are in it and living it understand it right in the moment. And I really have always felt that you're one of the great songwriters, um, especially in this in this genre. And it's always been a great joy to talk to you. And it's lovely to hear you with your own own music here. Thanks, Tom. Get out of here. That's very nice of you. <laughs> <laughs> I mean it. You know, I mean, I've, I've said all this to you before, you know. Anyway. That means a lot. Thank you. Give me a song to play off the record now. One that, give me a song that's not going to get played. Give me a song that, that needs a bit of love. A song that needs a little bit of love? Um, history. Why? Tell me about it. We're going to play it. Tell me why. Um, I, so with a lot of my last EPs, especially with Inner Monologue 1 and 2, a lot of those songs were freestyled in the booth, on the mic. Um, not a preconceived idea was, was a, was a, just a chord progression and me with my eyes closed, um, just freestyling. And I didn't do that at all with this album, except for history. Uh, I, I did this song with John Ryan and he played this beautiful guitar um, part and I put on headphones, I closed my eyes. And have you ever broken a bone was the first thing I sang. And then I sang the chorus down um, and just sort of pieced it together from there. But it's uh. It's, it's funny because there's a lot of contradictions on this album because I am a contradiction, I like to think. Because um, this, this song is saying, you know, it's, it's, it's in the, the beginning phase of the relationship where you're so enamored by somebody that all you want to do is know everything about them. You want to know, like, just who's hurt them, who, what their teacher's name was, what, who their best friend was growing up, what their childhood dog's name was. You know, you, you just want to know everything and you want to study every idiosyncrasy. Um, but then of course I have all your exes, which is like, actually, I'm kidding. Don't tell me everything. I don't want to know. I was just, like, let's just keep that in the vault. I was um, just about to say, I said, yeah, you go from wanting to know everything to like, if I yeah. hear you talk about your exes, yeah. I'm going to murder them. Yeah. yeah. So it's like, you're, you're too open. At, you know, it's like, okay, no, I'm, I'm good actually. Um, but I, I have a, I have a very close bond with history. Um, and I love this song very much. Julia, nice to talk to you. Nice to talk to you. Julia Michaels is an American singer-songwriter. Her new album, Not in Chronological Order, is out everywhere now.